engineering material can help to improve our daily life. And then also how uh, can the way can solve uh, their environmental problem by themselves as well. So you look at the, uh, the picture on the screen from the left to the right, that's a, I'm going to tell you, we're going to recycle the paper, the fabric waste out all clothes and the plastic, the, uh, the rubber waste, and the last one will be the food waste uh, uh, as well in these talks. For the scientists and the, uh, the, the junior researchers, you, uh, we, you can learn about how we get the technology and also the inven uh, invention patent and then also how you sell your technology and I mean the commercialize your technology to the industry. So how about me? So basically I got uh, my uh, PhD in the chemical engineering in University of Melbourne in Australia. And then I conducted about a four postdoc around the world. So the first one in Oklahoma, University in USA, and then I moved to Tokyo University uh, in Japan, and I worked for the MIT and, and US, and the last one is the, at the University of Cambridge in UK. Um, and uh, I joined NUS in 2010 as an assistant professor, and currently I'm associate professor at the NUS. And uh, next year, I will be the visiting professor at the Stanford University uh, in USA for about one year. So today, my, talk, my passion about that one is will be about the aerogel technologies. So you look at about the aerogel technology, about you asking about the passion of the research. Basically, my passion of the research is about how we recycle way to solve environmental problems. So how, uh, for about my, aero, uh, my aerogel research work, so for the patent and awards, we got about 15 patent aerogel, and we also licensed all of them to the four international companies in Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia, and maybe in USA, and uh, Professor Nan can tell you about that as well. We also win the five Global Innovation Award in 2016 and 19. And you can see about, if you Google about uh, the keywords, I don't hide mean aerogel and in US, you can see that the, and, uh, it's all the uh, figure on the TV channel and international news, it over the 2 million views. You look at the picture on the bottom, that's a, uh, that's a, I love about to see, I mean, the high school student also on your right hand side, that is the element school student, they come to my lab to learn how they recycle the way and convert them into the high value material. Now, also, there's about more than uh, 50 companies like the 3M, about the uh, British Stone, and also Coca Cola, and also Singapore and Vietnamese government. They show the very interest in how we conduct one the green aerogel technology. You can see the picture below as well. We're talking about a scenario of the plastic waste problem as well. You can see the Coca-Cola. This one is about here. It's about Coca-Cola, just about one million bottle uh, per minute. And then also about the Vietnam. We also, we are Vietnam, one of the top five countries around the world, contribute the plastic into the ocean. And also about 2,500 tons of the plastic waste we uh, we just daily in Vietnam. Now, uh, recently, due to the COVID period in Thailand, they said that the plastic weight will be increased about the three times as well, including about the use mask and also about the, uh, the face shield. Now, the, the thing is like every time we, um, uh, we, use, we drink the Coca-Cola and we threw away and then we put into the bin, we don't know where they're going, they're going to tell you this is the story of three plastic bottles, empty and discarded. Their journeys are about to diverge with outcomes that impact nothing less than the fate of the planet. But they weren't always this way. To understand where these bottles end up, we must first explore their origins. The heroes of our story were conceived in this oil refinery. 
the plastic in their bodies was formed by chemically bonding oil and gas molecules together to make monomers. In turn, these monomers were bonded into long polymer chains to make plastic in the form of millions of pellets. Those were melted at manufacturing plants and reformed in molds to create the resilient material that makes up the triplets' bodies. Machines filled the bottles with sweet, bubbly liquid, and they were then wrapped, shipped, bought, opened, consumed, and unceremoniously discarded. And now here they lie, poised at the edge of the unknown. Bottle one, like hundreds of millions of tons of his plastic brethren, ends up in a landfill. This huge dump expands each day as more trash comes in and continues to take up space. As plastics sit there being compressed amongst layers of other junk, rainwater flows through the waste and absorbs the water-soluble compounds it contains, and some of those are highly toxic. Together, they create a harmful stew called leachate, which can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, poisoning ecosystems and harming wildlife. It can take bottle one an agonizing 1,000 years to decompose. Bottle two's journey is stranger, but unfortunately no happier. He floats on a trickle that reaches a stream, a stream that flows into a river, and a river that reaches the ocean. After months lost at sea, he's slowly drawn into a massive vortex where trash accumulates, a place known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here, the ocean's currents have trapped millions of pieces of plastic debris. This is one of five plastic-filled gyres in the world's seas, places where the pollutants turn the water into a cloudy plastic soup. Some animals, like seabirds, get entangled in the mess. They and others mistake the brightly colored plastic bits for food. Plastic makes them feel full when they're not, so they starve to death and pass the toxins from the plastic up the food chain. For example, it's eaten by lanternfish, the lanternfish are eaten by squid, the squid are eaten by tuna, and the tuna are eaten by us. And most plastics don't biodegrade, which means they're destined to break down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, which might rotate in the sea eternally. But Bottle 3 is spared the cruel purgatories of his brothers. A truck brings him to a plant where he and his companions are squeezed flat and compressed into a block. Okay, this sounds pretty bad too, but hang in there. It gets better. The blocks are shredded into tiny pieces, which are washed and melted so they become the raw materials that can be used again. As if by magic, Bottle 3 is now ready to be reborn as something completely new. For this bit of plastic with such humble origins, suddenly, the sky is the limit. Now, also, the, the reason why we do the survey with the people, they say, I ask the people why you prove a waste about your plastic waste, like the plastic bottle, this one. So the, um, the people, they say, because they, we don't see the value of the raw material of this one. So that's the reason why they threw away. And I told them, if, if bottle this one, I would like to buy one dollar from you. And and they say, yes, of course we will keep it because it's a 50% of this value. So keep that in mind. If we buy this one in one or one dollars, we can make the new material and then sell it up to $20. So that's a big value we can make it from the average as well. Now, talking about our current problems, so that if we got about the plastic way, we got the paper way, we got about the fabric way, we got about the food way as well. We, the, for the, our daily life problem, we got the oil spill, on, and in the middle, we got about the fire from the high-priced building as well. And then how we had the people, we escaped 
uh, the high-rise building that you get the fire. So this is passing about the WTO 911, and that, that is, I would like to show that problem as well. So in Vietnam, every year we got about the people die due to the cancer, due to the air pollution as well. So my passion about the research is about how we use the um, uh, the, the way to recycle environmental and the industrial way on the top to solve the environmental problem and improve uh, the supplies uh, at the bottom as well. Now, the first one, after we wrote the material like this one, we go in to convert them into the fiber form. So you look at on the top screen on the left hand side, this is how we can convert the plastic waterway into the fiber form uh, immediately, yeah, continuously. And also on the right hand side, that is the process, they can convert them, uh, convert about the uh, paper weight, this is about the paper weight. Okay, this is about the previous way, and it also they can convert about the rubber waste into the powder form or into the powder form, the fiber and powder form as well. So you can look at the bottom, it is about we get the fiber of the plastic, about the fabric, about the uh, paper, and also the rubber as well. Now, for the mass production to reduce the cost, we usually buy it from uh, the supplier in the market. So you look at about that one, if you buy about, we can get a one ton of the plastic bottle, a plastic fiber, this one about $80 uh, for the one ton. So they are, we also, you can ask them to control the morphology and also you can ask them to uh, control about, I mean, the, remove about the stain and the toxic for you as well before they ship it to you. Now, after we get the fiber, and then what is the new form of the material we would like to use it from the fiber as well. So the current problem, we use the fiber for the low value application products. So now we are going to convince you to convert them into the noble energy material. Look at the video, this is the excellent- From insulating uh, astronauts properties. in space to crude oil 10,000 feet below sea level. Aspen Aerogels is the recognized leader in aerogel insulation and energy conservation. Aspen's leadership stems from its patented nanotechnology that converts the aerogel into a practical, flexible blanket. These blankets are quite simply the best insulation available in the world today, offering two to eight times better performance than any other material. To demonstrate the amazing insulation effectiveness of Aspen Aerogels, let's look at the temperature change between this oxyacetylene torch with a flame temperature of 1,000 degrees Celsius and the other side of this 6 millimeter Aspen Aerogel blanket, just 100 degrees Celsius. The insulating performance is just as phenomenal at low temperatures. So let's see the temperature change between this block of dry ice at minus 78.5 degrees Celsius and the same six millimeter Aspen Aerogel blanket, room temperature 22 degrees Celsius. Aspen is already conserving energy and improving performance in oil and gas pipelines, natural gas ships and storage facilities, industrial and refinery operations, as well as defense and aerospace, appliances and apparel. Today, Aspen scientists are creating more innovations that will result in new levels of energy efficiency and value for building and construction, automotive, and acoustical applications. Nanotechnology at work. That's Aspen Aerogels. So when you look at about that one, the Aspen aerogel, we're talking about the excellent property of the aerogels and also some uh, high value engineering application as well. But you can see about that one, the Aspen aerogel, they yield the silica and glass fiber in the aerogels. And by the way, aerogel, why the aerogel? Aerogel is the lightest, solid material in the world right now. Now, when you move to the, the problem of the commercial aerogel, so we got, uh, they usually use the, I call about the toxic silica based aerogel, and they use only for the heat insulation application only. 
also during the process, they got the gelation, also the solvent exchange. They give a lot of the organic solvent, and also they use expensive equipment like supervertical dryers, and they release a lot of the CO2 gas into the uh, environment as well. Also, due to the silica pitonus, they got the difficult quality control for the large scale aerogel manufacturing as well. And they got a high manufacturing cost due to seven to 10 days for the one best methods. So you look at about on the website and they say the Aspen aerogel, they can sell for the A4 side. They sell the A4 side about that size right here. They sell about 30 US dollar for one piece. And so for, so from the problem about this one, I give the invited talk at the MLS for the aerogel community, I say, for the aerogel commercialization, we need somehow, we need to reduce in the manufacturing cost significantly. We need to also overcome the techni techni technology difficulty for the mass production and also for the more high value application of the air gel instead of for the heat insulation application as well. So from this point, I, I move from about the how we give the recycle. <laughs> So you can see that the technologies, we can use it to recycle the paper way of this one. And also we can recycle the fabric way of this one as well. So the, um, the, we, this technology also win the, 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 the TechConnect Innovation Award 2016 and also the figure in the new national newspaper is Singapore Times as well. The reason why we win about the Tele Innovation Award 2016 because they said that that is the real technology for the eco products. Now, why does it about the green technology also advantages of the new aerogel technology we develop because it's ready for the mass production scale up and the uh, equipment cost to do a loss because we, uh, we got the cost effective methods. We don't have use any the gelation and so the solvent exchange process as well. So the process is very simple like we cook in. We uh, get them uniformly and we just put them into the fridge. Every time we would like to cook the aerogel, you just take out of the fridge and put into the free dryer. They can make the aerogel. So basically, we can just store the aerogel in the fridge as long as you want. So we just only make it when we, uh, we had the order. Now look at your right hand side, that is a commercial free dryer product of the aerogel. So this one can produce up to about 100,000 square meter per year as well. 
The second one about, uh, we're talking about, we don't use any of the toxic solvent. So we also use the lead tongue and also the energy consuming. Uh, the, we can say about energy is about 70% as well. Production grace is about 18 times faster than the current one. And also all the aerogel, uh, our aerogel can be recycled. We don't release any toxic waste into the environmental as well. Now talking about the cost, this will be for about the A4 side, about this one, the manufacturing cost, it can be about, um, um, it, I'm talking about like 20 cents, 25 US cents for A4 side about this one. And we, for NUS license about the cellular base, I mean, this is the cellular space from this one to the front culture also the DBN aerogel as well. Now, um, the, the next one about the also saw the multi problem. Yeah? I saw you the video Now, when the bulky problem with the polymer form about this one here, we cannot compress them. But for the aerogel, it is the first time we can compress them. And then when you put into the water, they can bow back into the nearly out uh, their initial shape. And then you just dry it overnight by under the ambient condition, and then you can get the aerogel back as well. So based on about when you compress the aerogel, the problem we can show about this one is we can reduce really the tourist space and the drain fog easily. Uh, aerogel. So the next one is about we uh, we not uh, we also recycle different kind. You look at the picture and we start from the bottom. So we did recycle the paper waste, the paper waste, plastic waste, agriculture waste, and the proper waste, and also the flyer waste into the hydrogel as well. And then you can look at about that one uh, on your right hand side on the top, that is the rubber aerogel from the rubber weight. And you can see how flexible it is. And all about uh, the picture on your uh, at the bottom, and that is my lab member, they um, uh, carry about different kind of the aerogel from the different waste as well. Now, well, uh, among about the waste, which one is the mod figures, uh, I mean the more spread through uh, aerogel we this, that is the plastic bottle waste. So when uh, you look at about that one uh, on your left hand side, that the pictures on the straight time newspaper, they show uh, you how we convert the plastic bottle waste into about the plastic aerogel. So keep that in mind. So the one bottle about this one, and then you can map the one A4 side of the aerogel of this one. And this one you can sell for 30 US dollar per pound PCD based on the website as well. But the one you can look at about the, the last sentence, the one dollar raw material of the plastic fiber, you can reduce about the 1,000 aerogel. 1,000 aerogel PC of this one, and you can value that up to about $5,000 as well. Now, this one, we also, uh, uh, it's also highlight on the Reuters, the Reuter, also the Lombard News. We also license that one to the DBN aerogel in Vietnam as well, for the mass production as well. We also lucky about this one for this technology, we also win that is the NASA competition in 2018. This is for the first, uh, for the sustainable technology among 800 designs from city country. So there are three country winner, three in USA, one in Germany, and the last one in the US. That is our lab as well. Also, we win again the Innovation Award 2019 in the USA with the TechConnect. Now, the, when I go to the, um, um, the award ceremony, I ask them why we win for about uh, um, the sustainable technology and the com uh, committee, they say that because due to about the advanced technology, but you also had a different kind of the application instead of the heat application only. So today I'm going to show you seven applications of the aerogel we develop. The first one, we work with about the BNG, they work for about the personal care. 
we were about we can use it for the medical devices as well. We can use it for leaning the oil spill on also the oxid organic solvent. We use it for the heat resistant and insulation jacket. We use it for the building. And also we use for the CO2 dust particle filter mask. And the last one we use for the food reservation as well. So let me go one by one about that one. The first one we go with about the uh, personal care products. Because we use the uh, hydrophilic material at the cross linker. So all about the aerogel, they will withdraw the link that the water stay the water. So when you look at about that one, the aerogel, they can absorb seven times better than the current one. So like the baby, uh, the diaper, the, the baby diaper here. So they can absorb seven times better than this one and quicker than the current one as well. So that's the reason why that uh, uh, the BNT would like to give the aerogel for the personal care. Now, the last uh, uh, for the medical the, uh, uh, device development, that we can use it for the cancer uh, test. Now, when you look at about that one, that the uh, the test in cut about the five minutes. But if you test uh, about the compressed aerogel, it will test about ten seconds, and then also they capture more than ten due to the high surface areas uh, of the aerogel as well. But the next one is about we use it to stop the about the gun wood. So it's not about when we compress about the aerogel, it's not we go into set the storage space, but that's if we go into use it for the medical devices as well. You can look at about on your left hand side that the ASTAT devices, they say that they can close up the gun soft wound in 50 seconds. How the people they do it, this is the concept. Tiny sponges made from wood pulp and coated with cheetah sand are biocompatible, fast expanding, and capable of stopping bleeding. By inserting the syringe into the wound and injecting tiny sponges as close to the artery as possible, the rapidly expanding sponges can seal the wound in just 15 seconds. The X-shaped markers on the sponges can be detected by X-ray machines to prevent them from being accidentally left inside the body. So we, 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 uh, we get the concept and we can use the similar slide. Tiny sponges made from wood pulp so we use the, uh, the aerogel and then we also compress them and they put into, um, uh, uh, into the serine and then we test with about in the water and also artificial plus. So that's how they look like. So what we found about this one here for the, uh, we use the aerogel. So the five aerogel pellets, they can stop the gun wound in five seconds as well. We talking about the cost. Well, for the ASTAT device, they cost about 300 Singapore dollars. But for the, we give the aerogel this one, the same size, and it will cost about $1.50. That is about one uh, US dollar as well. So that is, we can reduce about the 200 times uh, car, car price uh, compared to the commercial price. Now, the next one about for uh, the for the task application, that's it for the oil spill cleaning. So for the oil spill cleaning, the first one, you need to convert them into the, uh, uh, from the hydrophilate into the super hydrophobic material. How we did about this one here, basically we just push about your aerogel and then you got the oven at home, you just put this one into the oven and then also the, uh, the water repellent chemical and you heat it up about up to 120 degrees C for uh, about eight hours. And then after that, you will get convert them from the hydrophilic to supple hydrophobic. Now the, the application about this one is about here. 
on your left hand side you can see if you cost on the surface of most i mean mostly all the old material they can become cell cleaning material so that it can reduce about the linen cost of the high-rise building facial as well and also on your right hand side you can use it for the oil spill and go into the monastery how the aerogel can clean the oil spill one also for the technology this one we win uh, we won the global innovation award in usa in 2016 the reason why we won about it the innovation award because they we claim that the oil spill absorption really faster uh, than the commercial solvent and they can finish within the one minute they also can absorb seven times better than the commercial solvent as well after the uh, you can sweep them out like mechanical rubber, uh, mechanical uh, bleed, and then you can uh, I mean, uh, recollect 99.5 percent of the absorbed oil and aerogel we can reusable for many times as well now at the end you up the uh, aerogel you don't need to do any chemical treatment you just dry them into the small species and put, uh, play them on the raw material we convert them into the uh, the cellular fiber again now among about the plastic and so the uh, the fabrics and so the paper waste uh, aerogel uh, does it the plastic waste will uh, give you the this is the best for the suburban uh, the oil spill or suburban. now the next one about this one after we does it we use it for the oil spill on the sea but we also test it for the oil spill on the road as well so we test on the road in Singapore, you know that in Singapore every year we got about 1,600 oil spill accident per year in Singapore. And we test it with about the, the aerogel. And what we found at the bottom about this one, the whole process, it took about five and 10 minutes. And then we don't, we can, we don't need to do about, uh, redo the surface of the road as well. So we can save about 250K, $1,000, for the one accident, and we can also avoid about the um, uh, traffic jam as well. So that the reason why this is also highlight on the newspaper in Singapore. This is how we uh, cleaning the oil spill on the road when the energy are available in the market. The next one is about the, um, the four ap application that is the heat insulation of the building using the aerogel. So you look at about that one, the top one, the sentence we say, they got the ray heat insulation like air. That's it, the air temperature in the spring season. So also they over the temperature, I mean they get the, they got the low thermal conductivity at from the minus 50 to 120 degrees C. What does it mean about this one? Aerogel can keep you warm in the winter and keep you cold in the in the summer as well. So if you give the aerogel in one jacket, with the one jacket, you can use it in the summer and you can use it in the winter as well. Now they can stand up 300, 420 degrees C without damage the structure. Before the, you look at about the, uh, the figure on the right hand side, that is how aerogel look like when we put them outside the window, they very stable. Now the next one about the next um, application that is we develop a thermal jacket for the soldier. 
Now the common, the, 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 the common uh, water canteen, this one, you look at about that one, they can keep the cold water for about 30 minutes under the, um, the normal condition. So the DSO in Singapore, they would like to develop the new solution. They can keep the water inside is for at least four hours to prevent about the heat stroke of the accident of the soldier as well. So we did demonstrate about the design secondly for the cotton aerogel uh, when we work with Professor Nan here. So I'm going to show you the video about that one on the right hand side. So basically, you can see the figure on your left hand side. We do the sandwich structure. We put in the uh, the aerogel in the middle of the fabric, and uh, in the picture in the middle, that is the thermal jacket cover the water canteen. So keep that in mind. One bottle of this one is enough to match the thermal jacket for one uh, one uh, one water canteen. Now, when we does it about the design, when we compare with about um, the commercial bottle as well. So when you commercial this or this day, uh, it's better than the flow thermal bottle from the New Zealand. And then also well, it's very competitive with the back and flask, the, the metal bottle. And then, well, but when you're talking about that one, it will be what we found. That is, is we we uh, we uh, our uh, thermal uh, thermal jacket design, including the water canteen, it will be two times lighter than the vacuum flask, and will be six times cheaper than the vacuum flask as well. So that 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 is the reason why uh, instead of the buy, I mean, uh, trust away all the plastic bottle and also buy the vacuum flask. The DSO thinking maybe the use the aerogel the uh, aerogel from the plastic bottle way to the to develop the thermal jacket for the older soldier. Now, the next one is about for the size as well. So then if you look at about the bottle one here. So you look at about that one, not even about the rubber aerogel, but all the aerogel that can use it for the soil insulation. And then you can look at the uh, the picture on the left hand side. That's a, about in Vietnam, 15 million people. They got the noise. Uh, um, um, they got the noise problem as well. So you, what we found, well, what we saw for about the uh, sound insulation with the aerogel. So for the aerogel, it can get about sound insulation performance nearly about five times better than commercial one. And this is uh, also, if you use it, it will be three times lighter. And also this is 50 times steeper than the commercial farm. Now, the next one is about the cell insulation. And then we go with about um, um, how we can, I mean, now in Vietnam and so in Singapore, we got the high rise building. So every time we got the accident, uh, the fire, the people die. And then also the WTO 911 also inspired me about this problem as well. So my idea is about, um, the idea about how to help the people. 
to escape the building safely, calmly when they get the fire. So you look at the picture on the uh, on your right hand side. That is a common solution. The people they escape. That is also the hub. Now the bottom about this one is about the firefighter because the heat is so. Uh, so hot, and then the firefighter jacket, they stand up only 350 degrees C. Every time the fire temperature is higher than that, they get burned. So how we can help them, the help the people in this uh, incident about this one. So this is the idea about how we go in. Uh, uh, we need to revenge about the heat. We need to revamp about the toxic gas as well. So that's the idea about we go in to develop about the toxic gas filtering mask. And we also get about the fire resistant, the heat insulation jacket for everyone need. So I hope everybody can walk out the fire building like the Hollywood movie star. Yeah. Now, how we do about this one, the first one, you look at about the right hand side, how we do. So we just cost about the fire retardant chemical about this one, and you can see that it they didn't burn until 620 degrees C. And we also embed them into the fire jacket and then all know the normal jacket as well. So what we found about that one, we can reduce about 11 times of the waste of the firefighter jacket. We also revise about a seven times better heat protection as well, and the cost much cheaper. Keep that in mind, the fire fire jacket, you need to buy about $350 of this one. And for this one, if you do it, the, you can save the price about $80 as well. So it's affordable for everyone to buy it. Now the next one for about the application, that is we go in to use, develop the mass to filter in the dust particle and so for the COCO2 toxic gases. For the commercial one, you can see about, if you would like to revamp that one, you need to wear the, the mask on your left hand side, or the 3M, that is only for the dust particle as well. So to revamp about the evolution in Vietnam right here, you need to wear two of them at the same time. So the idea about this one, how we can compare, I mean, uh, I mean combine two masks of this one into the mask of this one, like this one, but everybody can use it. So how we do about this one, we just cost about with the aptus chemical and this one, when then after that the aerogel, you can see the pink color this here, this is the aptus called aerogel. So we embed into the N95, we put the one layer in this one here, and then you can guess about the new mass. This one, it can prevent about the dust and also can absorb about the C2 and CO2 gas at the same time as well. And absorbent capacity is very competitive to the best CO2 or CO material in the market right now that the MOF man runs. Now this one can be reused. Basically how we do this one, you just put into the microwave, heat it up, and then you can get the new mass to for reuse it. Now the next one about this is about the last one is the research agriculture product as well. So we cost the, uh, the aerogel with about the uh, active carbon. And what we found about this one, when we got about the one piece of the aerogel, this one, and then we put the aerogel into this plastic bag. How we found about this one after about a seven day in the banana is still uh, they can delay about the rotting area, this one. It's very important to prevent about uh, the rotting, also have the many um, uh, uh, company to export the proof overseas as well. So what we found about this one, they can delay, I mean, one piece of the aerogel like this one, they can release about the rotting for at least 14 days and 14 times better than the commercial solvent as well. And then they can reduce, I mean, you just heat it up and then you can get reduce them. So let me summarize about all the aerogel technology on the TV.
time I go to the beach, I see a lot of the waves. And when I look at the orange peel on the beach as well, the idea coming up, can we use the rubbers on the beach to clean the oil spill? Benson pack when you buy the game. into the pellet so that the pellet can stop the gun good uh, in about five seconds. to get the aerojet in the market uh, in the next five years. So um, that's a, also the end of my presentation, guys, and thank you so much for your listening. And uh, so um, I get back to who now. Thank you. I'm happy to answer your uh, question, guys. Um, uh, what's going on? Um, the, you let the audience to ask the question, please. Jiho, you mute it. Um, so, so, um, hi everyone. My name is, um, uh, Khan Nguyen and, uh, I'm also one of the core team in the Vietnamese Chemical Association and, uh, um, one second. Oh, I see. Sorry, we got into a little, uh, technical trouble right there. Um, so. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, thank you, Professor Hai, for a very impressive presentation. The research is really remarkable with so many applications that I keep <laughs> and then and then I lost count. <laughs> it's just mind <laughs> blowing. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to take it in right now. Um, but um, yeah, we will open the floor for questions. If anyone has questions, please raise your hands in the uh, bar on the side and I will call on you um, to, ask, to ask the question directly to Professor Hai. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Xin chào thầy Dân và chào thầy Hai. Yeah. 
À, rất cảm ơn à, thầy và với phần trình bày rất là ấn tượng về à, à, nghiên cứu thì à, cho phép em có một câu hỏi là à, cơ duyên nào mà dẫn à, hai thầy đến với cái nghiên cứu về cái mảng vật liệu này và và theo theo như em thấy ấy, thì đây là một cái nghiên cứu quá ư là thực tiễn quá ư là, là 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 mang cái tính cách mạng công nghệ thì làm sao mà từ một cái người PhD mà mới ra xong một cái luận án để mà nghiên cứu của mình để mà có thể tìm được một cái hướng nghiên cứu nó thật là thực tiễn như vậy để mà mình theo đuổi xin cảm ơn um, ok so uh, because there is some uh, uh, English speaker in the audience as well so I'm going to translate like that one so the question is like how we get the idea to get the um, uh, to develop the new Uh, research person, and then also how we transfer from the lab to the industry uh, for the mass production as well. Okay, now uh, uh, is this okay to answer in English or is it in Vietnamese? And then after that, I can translate into English. Okay. Um, it's totally fine in English. Uh, please go ahead. Okay. Now um, the the thing is like I tell you guys the. Um, all about the direction is by, by chance. So one day, I, I tell you in 2014, when I tried to prove a way about the plastic, I mean the paper way of this one, I cannot find the beam, the just into my department. So the cleaner, she said, why you trust away? You need to convert them into, you reuse them. Yeah, so that's the reason why I say, okay. Now, the reason why I say, Now, but the reuse them, if you use it like the normal people, they use for the low application, application about that one, they don't want to recycle them. So I need to convert into high value material for the high engineering, uh, value engineering application. So we need to talk in about, so that's the reason why I say, okay, in that case, we need to convert into the aerogel, because aerogel is one of the potential material in the century 21. Now, when you're talking about the application, not in about for the fancy, but you need to talk to the industry. You not need to talk to the company. So what is the, the potential, potential application they are interested? What is the potential market of your application as well? So as long as you can see potential market and then you go in this direction. Now go in this direction, but before you don't do about the fancy research, you need to answer four common questions from industrial people. The first one, is it better than the commercial product? Is it the equipment available in the market? Is it easy to do and is it cheap? As long as you don't, cannot come answer four questions, this one, you cannot sell your technologies. Now, most of our research and scientists, we stuck into the question number one. That's a, we do about the fancy to get the best uh, property of the material, but we, we say, okay, we compare with the commercial one, but we don't care about the equipment available in the market. We don't care about the price and then also about the last scale, um, uh, last scale control as well. So that's the, uh, the, the thing uh, I would like to share with you. From the lab to industry, we need to answer four questions, not only the first one. That's my answer. Thank you, Professor Hai. And we also have a couple more questions um, typing in here. So I'm going to read it out to you from Galilei from Western Sydney University. The first question is, what is the biodegradability of the aerogel? Now, when you're talking about this one here, biodegradable, if we use for about the, when they use the paper and they use about the cotton, Uh, the, the perfect ways, they don't get biodegradable when they are in the aerogel form. But if you are uh, at the end use, and then you would like to uh, dispose them, and then you just 
dry them into the small piecing or in the powder form, and then you put into the uh, the bacteria they can convert them into um, uh, the fiber form or cellular form. That is the biodegradable process. We start from there. Now, what you're talking about the plastic and the rubber as well. If you put talking about this one, that is for biodegradable. It's not in the fiber form. It's in the plastic form. This one it can take up to about, I say, four thousand four hundred to one thousand years to get the biodegradable. But if you get into the fiber form, and then the uh, the radiable is will be much faster, like fifty ton. Uh, faster, I mean, based on the Google search, I didn't do the bio, uh, the readable process, and then this will be to get the bio, the readable fit and come faster than in the solid form. Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, thank you so much for the answer. The next question that um, was raised here, and I also have the same question, is that could you please comment on the impurities on these uh, waste and their effect on the uh, producing of the aerogels. Now, when we're talking about the impurity effect on the aerogel performance, I usually they to uh, the thing that is like I usually start with about the application you focus on. Now, if we really focus on the application, like the heat installed for the building, that is in the same with structures. So we don't need really care about the impurity, that's one. And then if we could do this for the medical device, at that time we really care about the impurities uh, inside uh, the aerogel. Now for the, uh, the impurity can be removed due to about the bleaching process at the beginning of the raw material, you can do the bleaching process over there. That is how we usually remove the stain at home with the washing machine, yeah? So that, 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 that is the thing. So for the medical device, well, I would like to like, uh, if I use it, I mean, in the contact with the human being, I would like to use the high quality cotton fiber because that's it, because the people that are eco-friendly, they don't get the itchy or any effect on it. Um. Thank you so much. I just have a follow-up question on that. Regardless of the application of aerogel, um, just the impurities in the waste material affect the production of aerogel in general. Now, um, again, so um, that, that is the impurity. Um, we don't, I mean, uh, basically what we get when we get all about the waste from the supplier, we don't, uh, for the heat and soil insulation of the building, we just do as it is. We don't treat any impurity, yeah? So that, that, that is the thing. But uh, to revenge about uh, the dust and also the color about the impurity, I can have the supplier before they sell it to me, they say, can you do about the pre-treatment for me as well? And then they say, because I did say a lot of money for the manufacturing cost. So that's a, the impurity, uh, we can do it in the lab, but for the mass production, you can have a supplier to do the pre-treatment for you before they sell it to you. Um, and how do you think that the cost of the pre-treatment will add into the cost or the overall cost of the aerogel? And if um, manufacturer want to use the aerogel for certain application, like how they should uh, take into the pre take the cost of the treatment into the consideration. So let, let us talk about, I just give you a sample. It's about, the, uh, there's a lot of ways, but I give you about the sample of the cotton fiber. If the cotton fiber does is in from the fabric waste, and the cotton fiber that is from the high quality cotton fiber, this one here. So the price of this one will be about a three times higher than the than this one. That is the raw material. So if you do about the, the treatment, I expect it will be in between. Otherwise, it's higher than that. I just buy the high quality one. Yeah, so that, that, that's the easy thing. Um. Um, and there's another question from Indrang from uh, Ho Chi Minh City University. Um, 
and her question is, it seems like there's unlimited uh, type of ways that you can use for agile. Is there a limitation? Like what are the types of ways that you can see the application for agile and what are the type of ways that are probably going to be off limits? Um, now, um, Hanat Lee's guy beginning, I thought that aerogel can use it only for the cellular fiber. And then I try, I, I see, I do one by one, and then I don't see any problem with that. I can convert uh, any into the aerogel. So basically I can share with you, we do with about the, the recycle of the metal waste right now in our lab. So that, that's it, we try to get that one. I confident about this one I telling you because I, we do one by one. The first one we do with about the fabric waste and also with the paper waste. That is the cellular fiber. So from the cellular fiber, I move to the fabric waste. So cellular fabric waste, they got about like the synthetic fiber and cotton fiber. So as long as I can make the aerogel from the synthetic fiber and can move to the polymer one. Yeah, so from the polymer one, we move this about, we move from the polymer, and then from polymer, we try with the rubber one, because the rubber one, they get about the plastic, they get about the metal, yeah, and the fly as well. So as long as you can do about the rubber, you know the recipe, and then you can move with about the fly as, that is from this one. Okay, that's the metal one. So Prof, as long as you do this one, and then you know the recipe, and you know the technology, you can bring first all the metal uh, into the aerogel. Recently, we just published a paper, how we convert the magnesium weight into magnesium aerogel, recently. Yeah, so basically, guys, an agriculture one. So I, I telling you for the agriculture one, this one, we this about, uh, because in Vietnam, we got a byproducts. By so we did compare about, converse about the pineapple leaf. We work with the Ho Chi Minh City University of Technology on this one as well. So we got about the pineapple leaf, sugar cane uh, uh, waste, and then the coffee waste and the scoyaban. So we can convert them into the aerogel. So this is aerogel, this is the eco-friendly aerogel. They can use it for the many applications I see, I tell you about already. Yeah, so also for the new application, if you ask about it, the seven application, but we also move to the new application, that is, this is the application there. So you need to find out, you need to talk to the company. Yeah, you need to talk to the industrial people. What is the potential market? What is their current problem they would like to solve? So for example, we're talking about this one here, how we remove the heavy metal from the waste, uh, the water waste, yeah? So that is the problem they would like us to solve. So we work with the industrial people for the application. That is uh, my answer. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I actually really like the idea of focus on the application first, and then from there we reverse engineer back to what are the processes that we can use and what are the types of materials we can use based on the application from the clients. Um, because I am not, uh, I don't do any type of research in this um, field and there are, uh, <laughs> wanted to ask more technical questions. So um, yeah, I think I would uh, give the, for them to ask you know, the question directly. So that would be easier and not me translating it in a confusing way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can could you please give the um, mic to Ki In Duang? Uh, she has a follow-up question. Um, yeah, that's we're afraid of the technical uh, difficulty. Why can is working on it? Then I'll just ask another question that may not be too confusing for me to trans for me to. So uh, this is a question from Cal from Queen's University in Canada. Mm. Thank you for the great talk. Um, the, uh, he has a couple of questions. The first one is: Can you comment on the global demand for aerogel in comparison to the amount of plastic waste? Okay, <laughs> the plastic waste. Uh, that's a, a lot of the plastics were actually, 
the 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 uh, the markets for the aerogel is not about the aerogel the market we're talking about the uh, the markets for the application so for example if you give for the heat and the size application that the billion dollar market yeah as long as your aerogel your product is better than commercial one it's cheaper yeah and then the people will buy it. So it's not about the demands of the aerogel, demands of how the, I mean, you prove it, the performance of your new material better than the commercial one, and then you can sell it, it cheaper than the commercial one, or it better, but with the better, uh, with the competitive price, the people will buy it. Yeah, so that is the way we, we should do. But uh, the, uh, when, you, uh, when I work with the application, I usually do the uh, the market survey first. Yeah, this a uh, we need to do the survey market say okay in the uh, the next five years how the market will develop uh, what is the market demand and then we will start the research from there. Um, yes, because and also I I'm guessing that there are also a lot of other applications for plastic waste. So um, instead of going to aerogels um, to support for the sudden uh, demand for aerogels, they can also go to other applications. Um, the next question is more technical. Um, can you explain how aerogel absorbs CO? Absorb what? Absorb CO, carbon monoxide. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, basically, um, um, what were, uh, uh, I got, uh, it's very technical questions, but uh, <laughs> you, can go, <laughs> you can go to uh, my paper. We did publish about that one as well. But I can tell you about this one guy for, uh, I can tell you the principle, okay? So the principle, whatever, you can see this is uh, like the porous material. But we're thinking about this one, if 95% will be air inside of this one, it become aerogel. Okay, now the aerogel, you can see this one is the porous, that is the porous material. So when you cause on the surface, the porous material with a different chemical, okay? And then be, they, be, they got a functional rope. Every time they got a new functional rope, and then the CO, CO2 come in, they can keep it on the surface. Okay, so the, the, the question is like, uh, I suggest you go to my, uh, uh, where, uh, my lab website, you can see the paper mm -hmm. there. We explain very detail of how the mechanism, how the CO2 and CO absorb into the aerogel. Yeah, that, 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 that. Thank you so much, Professor. The, the many questions for you. So thank you, thanks a lot for your patience. Um, the <laughs> next question is, uh, could you comment on how this technology can be applied in Vietnam? And if so, then um, could you also comment on any startup working on this and how is that progressing? Um. Okay. Um, now, the, the, the process is in it's not about, I mean, this technology, it can be applied anywhere. So we got an interest in around the world as well. It's like in China, India, uh, Europe, USA, Canada, Japan, and Vietnam. But the thing is like, okay, uh, maybe we are Vietnamese, so we just bring the technology back to Vietnam first. So that's the reason why we bring back to the DBN aerogel. So the DBN awesome. aerogel, we raised some funding and we support from the, the government as well. And so that, 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 that's it here. The tech, um, uh, so uh, the thing in Vietnam, the raw material is very cheap and abundant in Vietnam. So we just buy that, uh, the equipment we can order from South Korea and also from China as well. So we can set up about that one, low to the labor cost. So the cost of the material will be low value. So that, that is how we can apply in Vietnam. That is the reason why I think the Vietnam, why we do Vietnam for licensing as well. Yeah. Um, now the technologies about this one, so I can show you about compare to, um, 
compared to about the new um, uh, the technology they develop is will be much better than the curves, the character of uh, the new. But the only one thing I would like to say with you, the current one, we set up the pilot in uh, in NUS. Sorry, Professor Nan, I need to show about this one as well. So that's the, about this. So, so you look at about this one, this is about how we can guess the, the time before this is about the, the best technology we develop right now. But in in US, uh, in, in US, in our lab, we set up the pilots. It will be see that uh, we call not one the non proven technology. This one, we can reduce about the error continuously and we can reduce the cost a lot up as well. So you can see how in the future we can develop this one. And then this one, uh, this, the old uh, technology of this one, it all by the DB error gel. Yeah, this is easy. Uh, I just tell you about that one. Yeah, so that one is uh, in the, that if we move forward in the future. Um, thank you so much. And um, so this is for just one specific type of Azure gel. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, who said it again? Huh? Yeah. Um, is it just for one specific type of Azure gel? The BE no, this is, as long as it's the fiber form, we can do it. Okay. And uh, what is the timeline that you see for this um, can be brought up in manufacturing in Vietnam? So we expect this one in two years. So you, you should see products in next year. That's, that's really fast. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, the next question is, um, Dear Professor Hai, I was wondering if we use if we use the freeze drying and cross linking method, do you have a robust robust aerogel? And when you synthesize an aerogel for mass production, oh, you already answered this question, right? And do you yeah, have? I, any, answer, I answer already. <laughs> yeah. And do you have any concern about recyclability properties of the material? I think you did mention some in your talk as well. Yeah. So basically, guys, so for the aerogel at the end use, yeah, you just convert them and then you just write them into the fiber form again, or you can, uh, I mean, write them into the powder form again, and then from that, uh, that, 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 that recycled powder or fiber, you can make the aerogel again. So we can recycle them, yeah, we them dispose them into environment. Um, so the next yeah, I think there's a lot of questions about recycling of aerogel. It just means that everyone is really care a lot about the environment. Um, yeah. um, the next question is um, from Gao Hangen and also please, you, this is a billion dollar industry. Why don't you launch a startup instead of giving the technology to other companies? <laughs> exactly, yes. Okay, <laughs> actually, uh, we did. Uh, I'm telling you about guys, uh, 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 not, not only about you, all the, I got all the industrial people that usually come up and say, can we start a business together? Yeah. And then that, 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 that's, that is the thing. But uh, uh, when I, uh, I'm thinking about this one, I got passion about the technology material development more than in the, to become the businessman. Yeah. So that, that, that the reason why I say, instead of about to become a businessman, and then I cannot, I mean, contribute 100% to develop the new material, recycle the material to enhance the, our human daily life. So that's in my current person right now, but I may, I may start up with the company, yeah? With Professor Nen, maybe, <laughs> yeah. I think we really need the people like you to focus on doing what you do best. And then <laughs> for more inventions like this to come out in the future. There are actually many more questions for you, but because of the um, time constraint, and um, you also have, I feel like you also spent a lot of time talking already. So I will um, probably save these questions um, and send it directly to you just in case you want to respond to them mm. later. Um, and again, just I'm saying this to every, um, 
yeah, for everyone, like, thank you so, so much for joining. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank like, you for joining. <laughs> no, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's really our honor and, uh, yeah, our honor to have you. And it was such a great talk that I feel that everyone here today would benefit from uh, you sharing your research and also the experiences of how to roll up from uh, a lab to an industry. And that's, I think, is everyone, every researcher dream to have the product um, become commercialized one day. And we have a lot to learn from you. And we really, really hope that um, this, everyone find this um, webinar today um, uh, insightful and then continue to um, contribute to the, the same program so that we can develop our group uh, for Vietnamese people, um, for Vietnam in general, in the future. So in the end of the uh, webinar, we will send out a feedback form for everyone to fill in um, on any comments that we can improve our um, program. We would really appreciate that. Um, once again, thank you so much, Professor Hai, and thank you everyone for joining in today. We hope you had a great weekend and I hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, thank you everyone for listening. Hey, good weekend. Bye guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye for Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. I'm leaving now, huh? Yeah. Rồi, cảm ơn anh Hải nhiều nha. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye. yeah. Cảm ơn anh Bye bye. 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 Sơ xuất một chút technical nhưng mà anh Hải thì cực kỳ xuất sắc ạ. À, sao được. Anh Giang ơi. Dạ. Yeah. Uh, either you want to say something, your next time will be your, right? Hương, Thành Giang kìa. Will that, will that be possible? <cười> that would be great. Like, that would be more than we can ask for. <cười> look, look, your, your generation is doing marvelously well, right? I'm about to retire. Um, going to...